declare to you that the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit, is a coming your way in the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. I see the blessing. So we have come before your holy throne today. We want you to speak with us, Lord, one by one. We want thy glory to be visible in our lives. We want your hand to be revealed in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit reign and move in our midst in Jesus' name. Father, we cannot go on and do anything when you are not there. And we believe when you are here, Heavenly Father, you can do abundantly above what we ask and what we think by the power that we get in us. Heavenly Father, we still believe today that as we have assembled in this holy place, you are going to change our lives. You are going to heal us. You are going to touch us. You are going to take off everything that is hindering our progress, our way forward and everything that we want to do. Father, you are going to do great and mighty things in our lives. Father, your hand is going to be visible in our lives in the name of Jesus. Your power is going to be visible in our lives in the name of Jesus. Your grace is going to be visible in our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, as we are going to move out of this place, moving out, Heavenly Father, our lives will never, never, ever remain the same. Father, we are not ashamed of the gospel of peace because it's power of salvation in our lives. Father, we are not ashamed to speak about the greatness and the goodness that you have done in our lives. We are not ashamed to speak of the wonderful things that you are doing in our lives. Father, we just want to thank you. We just want to glorify your name. We just want to bless your name. Heavenly Father, we don't take this as a challenge. We take this, Heavenly Father, as a way forward. We take this, Heavenly Father, as a way that has come to us so that, Father, we can trust in you more and believe unto you more and say in you more and do what you say more and more for the glory of your mighty name. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the praise, Father. We bless your name. We magnify your Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, we bless you Jesus. We bless you, Your Majesty. Riabadibua Jehovah, Riabadibua Christo. Riabadibua Jehovah, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' name. Tato Yahao Ipe Tere Banaba Bahe Tere Tato Tato Thank you, Jesus. 
joyful noise unto the Lord father we thank you father we thank you father we bless you father we glorify your name we bless your name we magnify your name you are a good God a righteous Lord you are the I am that I am the Lord God Almighty the Lord is always there we lift our hands to you we bless you because you are the Lord we bless you because you are the King the soon coming King Babaria Varenda, Babaria Vakota, Babaria Vahodisa, Babaria Vamotsimo, Vamotsimo, Abashandu Kingango, Abashandu Kimuren, Abashandu Kingango, 
Batsura ba ona na na mosinga tsi na le maga tsana mure na Jesus Christo. Babari abari bu, babari abari enda. In the name that is above every name, Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we worship your precious, mighty, holy name in Jesus' name. Masiare. Nandifinda Morero. My name, I'm the Morero. Chifa Nandi Masia. Masia. Ga February. In February. Gazi two. On the second. Oh, Nandi Gosuka, Dosuka for Nushkuan Gazi two. I arrived here in Houting on the second. The Toma Uda for no Charisi. And I started coming to Charis. Gazi sixteen is a February. On the sixteenth of February, da wana shumo ka company ni afi Maemo Security Services. I got a job in the company called Maemo Security Services. Do shuma mwe zibaone da promote wa sa administrator. I just worked for a month and then I was promoted to be an administrator. Eh, but you nadi go shuma sa administrator. Now I am working as an administrator. I want to thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I just want to encourage everyone who's around here. It's been a difficult time uh, for the world. We have uh, faced with COVID-19. And then people are losing their jobs. Um, they're losing their salaries. They're short paid. But uh, on the 4th of May, um, I was the first group to be called at work. And then people are being uh, stopped, they're being uh, retrenched. I just want to encourage you that you must keep on giving and paying tithe even in difficult times. I'm the living testimony of that. Because I've been tithing, I've been giving. And God has saved my job. Amen. Amen. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I would like to thank God for what he has done in my life. Um, I have two testimonies. First testimony, uh, I'm married. I got married. Um, they paid Lobola for me. I'd like to thank Apostle and Mama for their prayers. Um, the second testimony is that um, on, in 2018, 2018 I was um, finalizing my master's degree. Um, then after finalizing it, um, I graduated. And then uh, my supervisor advised me to um, publish my master's degree. So I would like to thank God uh, my master's work was published with um, one of the publishing companies called Elsevier. This is the master's paper. Thank you. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Eh? I want to thank God has blessed me with a car. Suzuki Balino. Eh? Suzuki Balino. Eh? Suzuki Balino. Ufindizina Lahone. Amen. Rita Mori Wamzimu, we thank the Lord. Amen. Are you ready to continue? I'm expecting more testimonies. Maybe, what if 10 people among you testify next week? What will happen? So, all of you testify next week. What will happen? Amen. So, let's watch what God will do this week. Amen. Amen. So, I was thinking about this scripture, Psalm uh, 23. Yes, uh, Mama, uh, can you read us Psalm 23? Uh, Verse 4. <clears throat> 
Psalm 23. We're reading verse 4. It says, Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was reading this verse. It brought me a message that I preached to you last year, which I want to share with you again. Because many times, if you can look around, you will begin to see that everything is like it's falling down. But if you read this verse, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod, your staff, your rod is there to protect and your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. David, when he spoke these words, the situation were like this. He was surrounded by unpleasing situations. Amen. And uh, to extend that, you could see that his life was at stake. You know, there's a time whereby your life can be in danger. Mama, can you interpret what I'm saying now? I think, uh, uh, I think if you can interpret, I'll preach better. I miss that. <laughs> I miss that. <clears throat> so David was facing on. David, I'm not going to lead you to check out. Interpret in Tsonga. In Tsonga. I'll try. Yeah. So when David was facing this uh, situation, he began to speak these words. Because you are with me. Listen to this. Uh, you have to reach a, a level where you know you are with God. If you know you are with God, you will trust God. Let's, let's trust God. Trusting God. Last year I taught you about uh, trust test. Last year I taught you about trust test. of trust. This time I want us to trust God. Because the way this corona has dealt with us. You can question if we are still people who are trusting God. Because if you read this verse, David says, David though I walk in the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. That will happen. Why? I fear no evil. If David was living in our time, he will say, Though I live in the time of Corona, I fear no death. Because if you can see, uh, you know, Corona has brought fear to extend that our Christianity has been affected. Our trust to God is no longer possible. It says. Okay, let me read that verse again. The second standard that it says, I fear no evil, for and you are with me. Why? Because there's a rod. You protect me with it. There is a staff that guides me. Look here, if you are protected and there's guidance, there's nothing to fear. If you are protected, you know when we talk about guidance, it means there's a way out. If people are coming to fight you, there is protection. And there's a way out. 
destiny, there's nothing to fear. So David had that situation. So David That is why maybe David in Psalm 91 verse 2. That is why 91 verse 2. He said, I will say of my God. He is my fortress and my refuge. Can you say, what is it that you talk about your God? Because David saw it. The time when he faced Goliath, he said, I saw myself killing a bear. I saw myself killing a lion. This that is coming is small. Listen, trust makes you to face the future. And believe the promises that God has promised. That's what trust can do for you. It makes the promises of God real. If you don't trust God, you make God not real. God does not exist. Look here. The word that you receive by faith makes you to trust God. You're, now you start to obey God. You reach a level whereby now you wait for God. Can you see all these are levels? You hear the word. You believe. You trust God. When it, the moment when you trust God, you have now expectation. You wait. You wait. You know you God wait. will do it. In Romans 28, 8, verse 28, yes. Romans 8, 28. Can you read that verse? I've read this verse, but it will surprise you when I interpret it. Romans 8, 28. Yes. If you trust God, every situation that happens to your life, you will know that it's nothing. It's working for your best. Can you read that verse, Mama? May I pay it off? Yes. Romans 8, 28. Or let me read. God causes everything to work together for good. Amen. Of those who love God. And I call according to his purposes for them. Amen. Amen. Can you just read Amplified Bible? <clears throat> Let me read it with Amplified Bible. Mama says. <clears throat> Romans 8 verse what? 28. 28. It says. And we know with great confidence that God who is deeply concerned about us causes all things to work together Amen. as a plan for good for those who love God. Amen. You, let me just read it again. Listen to that verse again. And we know with great confidence that God who is deeply Concern about us. Amen. Causes all things to work together as a plan Amen. for good. Causes all things to work together as a plan for good. In other words, the pain, the losing of the job, the rejection. He allowed them to be one for good. Therefore, what we need now is to trust him. Because we are so much praying to change the situation. Not knowing that God has caused us to work for good. Sometimes we spend time praying for a change. Not knowing that that is a good God's plan. To reveal his goodness for our lives. You know, sometimes uh, 
you ask yourself why this thing is happening to you. If you trust God, you will understand that there is an answer beyond this situation. We need to trust God. It means we, are, we will have eyes to see beyond If the challenge. If you believe, say amen. If you read that verse, let me read it again. Here the Bible says, God is content. We know with great confidence that God was deeply content about us. In other words, we are content, but we are not deep. What God wants us to be concerned is our trust in Listen, Him. Listen, if we trust God, He will we... never allow us to be put to shame. Everything will work for good. I don't know if you are hearing me. Amen. Thank God you are here today. You can search and it's working for good. You know your situation. And it's not there to destroy you. Because God wants to want His name to be praised. So He won't allow you to die. He will use your situation to bring his plan. I don't know if you're hearing that. Hallelujah. In Psalm 40, Psalm 40, from verse 1 to 4, verse 1 to 4. I'm happy when the Bible says, God is concerned about us. God is concerned about my problem. He's concerned about you. He's concerned about your sickness. He's concerned about his concern. Maybe that's what the Bible says. Cast all your cares upon That's why the Bible says, He knows. If you remember Matthew 6, verse 6, it says, it says, even when you pray in secret, He knows what you need. He will answer you openly. He's concerned. Amen. Amen. God is concerned about what you are going through. So whoever is causing that pain, he is becoming the enemy of God. Sometimes you need to leave people like that because you know God is, God is involved. Trusting God means you relying in him. Totally depending on him. So sometimes he will cause some challenges to come to you. When I say he will cause, it means he can also stop those challenges. He will allow because he's not the one who brings those challenges. When Satan brings the challenge, he will allow it for good. I don't know if you're hearing me. Amen. Satan will bring all these challenges. Satan is there to destroy you. Therefore, you need to know that your problem is not there to destroy. It can destroy others. Amen. 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 You need to rely on him to depend on him. Why God can allow this thing to happen to you when you depend on him? I'll tell you why. Can I tell you the reason why? Why God allow a challenge to happen to you? A problem to happen to you? A situation to happen to you? And keep quiet. And keep quiet. And says, my child, trust me. That I will take him out from this situation. Amen. There are things that God is concerned about. Amen. 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 When you are living on earth, you fulfill His will. If that challenge won't come, you fulfill your will. 
I don't know if you hear me. He wants you to live your life. He created you. So when you trust him, you are saying, Lord, I, I want the life you created me for. I don't want to come here on earth and live someone's life. I want to live the life you created me for. So when I trust you, I will wait patiently for God to bring what is expected. Let's read that verse, Mama, and then maybe. Psalm 91. Maybe it will really make us to understand what we are talking about. Maybe it will make us to understand what we are talking about. Can you read from verse 1 to 4? From verse 1 to 4. Yes, Psalm 40. It says, Psalm 40. 40. When I read this, I was very happy. I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord and he inclined to me and he heard my cry he brought me up out of the horrible pit on tumult and on destruction out of the miracle and he set my feet upon the rock, steady my footsteps, and establishing my path. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the great reverence and will trust confidently in the Lord. Blessed, meaning fortunate, prosperous, and favored by God, is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not regard the proud nor those who lapse into lies. Can you hear those scriptures? There is very much, those scriptures are important for all of us. Amen. The moment when I read this, I said, Oh, David. 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 the same David we were talking about. David, he said, I, I waited patiently with expectations. Because I trust this God. To him, the trust on verse 4. He knew that the moment when he started to trust, it was a blessing. Trust, trust favor, prosperity. As a child of God, you must know that what you have is not a blessing now. It's when you start to trust. Because the blessing must start inside you. When you trust, you are prosperous. You are blessed. You are favored. You are fortunate. What is the meaning of being favored? You are chosen among to receive from above. You are a person that has been chosen. There's a blessing upon you. You can go to a dry land. And you, you sow and harvest. But you have to wait patiently. You have to wait patiently and expectantly. Trusting God. This will make people to fear you. I don't know if you hear me. There are some people who will fear God and they are looking up to your life they want to see where you live. they say oh let's see let's see let's see let's watch this person is falling this person is dying they will be surprised when God bring your expectations let it happen this year in the name year. of Jesus sometimes you will be asking yourself why, why I'm trusting God things are moving why this way remember it works for good why I'm trusting God I mean, look at my finances when I try this I bring this, this. Hey. there are some people who are looking at you they are waiting for that day when that day comes, oh my God, 
they will fear your God. Praise your God. God wants to be praised through your life. He wants people to say, ah, we know this man, he was supposed to be dead. Why is he alive? Because of the trust you have, God will make sure that they see you being alive. They will make sure that, he will make sure that they see you being alive. That they see you prospering. You know, these scriptures... Me, I can be till during the day. Because I'll be saying, thank God. I will wait patiently. I because I trust God. God, I trust you. As I'm trusting you, I know many will come your way because of your visitation. Some people are waiting for a day where God visits you. Your family, your friends, your neighbors. Don't ever think they are not looking at you. They know what is happening. But there's a day that God, that trust will end the results. So you need to hold on confidently. To trust God if you believe. Say amen. Okay, read that verse 4 again, Mama. I want, I want this verse 4 to be part of us. Read, yes. read. Blessed, meaning fortunate, prosperous, and favored uh -huh. by God is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Yes. And does not regard the proud, nor those who lapse into lies. You heard that? It's true. The pride and the lies. Things that deceive people and make people to come together with thought, we, we, without a vision. Sometimes when you trust God, you say, God, I want, I, I want I want the way you want it. There was a time when I was praying this prayer of the God. If you are blessing me the way you want it. If you are using me the way you want it. Let it be the way you want it. If there is a delay, let it be the way you want it. Because remember, the blessing it will start from your trust. It doesn't start from outside. It starts from your trust. So now when I'm trusting, there's nothing to show. And the fruits of the trust will be seen by men. So if God, you want to bless me, let it be the way. Because I'm waiting upon the Lord. There's no way I'm going. I'm trusting my God. I don't know if you're hearing that. So I want to pray for you today. By telling you this way, this is a prayer too. Let this trust be established in you. Not things outside. Not things outside. Let it start inside you. You know, you know when David says, though I walk in a valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because I've got your staff, I've got your rod. I've guided and I've got direction. And my direction, nobody can understand except you God. Because where I am, people cannot understand me. Others, there's a solution in the left. Solution on the right, but I say I'm going on. I'm moving by the direction of my God. We need Christians like that who are saying, I'm moving by the direction of God. I'm moving by the direction of God. I'm moving by the direction of God. When people are saying, we can't see anything, I'm moving by the direction of God. I want to tell you this. When God searches for your trust, He demands responsibility. You cannot just say, I'm waiting, expecting from God to do nothing. No, 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 no. The responsibility must be shown by you. Of showing that I trust this God. That is why I'm doing one, two, three. And I cannot do one, two, three. I do one, two, three. I cannot do this. 
I cannot postpone things. Or, or getting things in a wrong way. Oh, to prove a point. Because I know I have to wait confidently, patiently, knowing that God will answer me. I don't know if you are hearing that. Look at someone and says, wait patiently. Expectedly. Don't judge me by what is happening around you. Some people will leave you because you trust God. And when you are trusting God and there's nothing on you, you are useless. They love you because you have got something. They leave you because you have got nothing. What kind of friendship is it must start inside your heart. Trust must start inside. And when it starts inside, you are blessed. You are favored. You are prosperous. When we talk about prosperous, it's not outside. It's not a car. It's not a house. It must start inside your heart. It must start outside your heart. It must start inside 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 your heart. People want to see those houses must start inside you. If it start outside, it will be finished. I don't know if you are hearing that. Tell someone says, I'm hearing you. Are you hearing that? Amen. Let's open this scripture we read again. Ask somebody again, I say, are you hearing that? What is trust? What is trust today? What is trust today? Because many times we think trust is okay, I trust you, eh? I trust you. But on the other side, there's no trust. Let's read this one. Uh, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. Yes, uh, verse 5 to 7. This one. She will show 3, 5 yes. to 7. It says what? It's when trust, trust. now is waking now. Trust and rely confidently uh -huh. on the Lord with all your heart. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. My God. You know, if truly we want to trust God, let us not use eyes to judge. Because whatever you see, must be examined from the word of God. Whatever you see, you must check if is it worthy. Scripturally, yeah. if you trust and rely confidently, do it with all your heart. Not with your wisdom. You know, that's what I was trying to tell you, that if you want <inaudible> to build things by your eyes, <inaudible> judging people <inaudible> by your eyes, <inaudible> you can end up sinning against God. Because here, the Bible shows us we need wisdom <inaudible> from him <inaudible> to tackle <inaudible> everything. Mama, can you read verse 7 for us there? Do not be wise in your own eyes. <inaudible> uh -huh. Fear the Lord with a reverent awe and obedience. If and you do not, listen, if you do not use your eyes to find your way out, you are also fearing God. The fear of the Lord teaches you not to use your eyes to find your way out. You ask God. Let's ask God about our career, our marriages, about our future, 
God will make you to fulfill his plan. Listen, no one who fulfills God's plan will remain small. If you, are, if you are chosen by God, favored by God, blessed by God, to fulfill God's plan, you will never be small. God has not called anyone small. It's out of our wisdom. Of our eyes that we find our way out which make our names useless. God has created you to be useful. If you believe, say amen. Tell someone say, God has created you useful. God has created you to be useful. Can you read Philippians 4 verse 6? Philippians 4 verse 6. Let me check those scriptures. Yes. He says what? It says, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific request known to God. Yes, this verse is very bad. I'm just saying it's very bad. Neri, to Christians who want, to, who want to be rich very fast. If you, want, if you want results very fast, this scripture is Don't be anxious for anything. In everything acknowledging. This, this is a verse that you can remind yourself, my, my soul. Don't be anxious for anything. anything. Because everything works for good. So when you are under a challenge, wait for God's time. It says here, anything but in every circumstances and by prayer, make your request known to God. Listen, if you are trusting God, just tell God, God, you are aware of this sickness. You are aware of the desire. The Bible says, I must trust you. You'll give me the desire so, for my heart. Father, I trust you. So, give me the desire for my heart. I want to see your house. If you remember last week, I told you that not all prayers you pray will be answered. Because those prayers will be dependent from the fruits you are having in the spirit. But here, this verse says, don't be anxious. 
Because there are things that will be happening to you that will be Everything is God's plan. There was a time where, you know, many things were happening in my life. And people were saying this, saying that. And I decided to say, let me keep silent. Because even if I answer, no one will understand. I will end up confusing Whatever they say, let it be right. Let me allow everything that is being said. Because I know, I trust God. He He have the solution for me. Listen, Sometimes you'll find yourself you are worrying about <laughs> and it brings depression and it brings sickness and challenges and the moment when I withdraw from so that I start to have peace the peace that the Bible says it surpasses <laughs> all understanding when you want to understand it you won't understand it how can you have a peace carrying on doing what you are supposed to be doing showing you trust God in this challenge because remember whatever that is coming your way is to stop the trust the moment when your trust is nullified it means there is no God whatever you are going through is there to make you to complain you have to question why this why that why that from there say oh God and I'm leaving that to you I'm trusting you as you are let me see what you will do from there the peace of God came I began to Carry on doing what I'm supposed to do. Because the devil wants to stop you on what you're doing. The moment when you lose trust, you will stop. And you stopping. Remember that. You are stopping your responsibility. Remember you have to do your part so that God will do his part. Tell me, you have to do your part for God to do his part. You cannot trust doing nothing. You trust with responsibility. You trust doing something. You cannot wait doing nothing. You wait when you are doing something. So Satan wants to stop you. So that you prove that you are not waiting. And you trust that God cannot do anything. I don't know if you are hearing me. Amen. I'm praying that from today you don't stop what you are supposed to be doing. You carry on doing it no matter what. Because God is looking at your trust and your trust provokes your responsibility and your responsibility shows your strength. The moment when you are standing showing that you are a child of God you are carrying on and you don't care what the devil says that's why God will prove those who don't believe in you wrong. God will never prove the people when you are not doing anything, remember, they want to stop you as they have stopped. So you move forward, there will be a day of visitation. That day is coming when God is going to speak for you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. So don't be anxious. You will complain. You will worry. As if God cannot answer your prayers. Remember, God is God who sees in the secret. He sees in the secret. He will answer you openly. He knows your heart. If you believe, say amen. He knows your heart. He knows what you are going through. He knows your challenge. And you carry on with your responsibility. And the same God who knows what you are doing for your heart, trust in the heart, believing that he is going to answer you, he will answer you openly. This is the time that we have to see our God answering us in the name of Jesus. If you believe, say Amen. Amen.